All right, so how I do sprite sheets in P5.js is I use the image function. So the image function takes, like normally it defaults at a minimum three arguments. You need the image and the location. So the first argument is the image and then the X value and the Y value that you're gonna start the top left corner and draw the image at. So it also takes additional arguments though if you wanted to um, specify like a subsection of the source image. So it takes the image, where you're drawing the image, and then it asks you what is going to be the width and the height of the image. And then of the source image, you can say, start at this point and draw, you know, take crop this many pixels for the width and this many pixels for the height. So those are all the arguments that go into image. So let's take a look at that. So let's take a look at an actual sprite sheet. I've got this man walking and let's load, let's load that up. So I'm gonna use preload and preload lets you um, like load lots of files and it'll give you a little spinning wheel while things are loading. So this can be helpful if you have really big files or just like a lot of files. So I'm saying walk equals load image man walk. And if I had misspelled something that would have thrown us an error, but we're good. So it loaded properly. And then I can show you what that looks like. Image of walk at zero, zero. Sweet. So I'll move this over a little bit. All right, and then underneath that, let's draw another one. And this time we're gonna use the additional arguments. So let's say, let's say we just gave it 100, 100 here. So what that does is that's saying the width of the image on the canvas is gonna be 100 by 100. We want this to be equal to the width and the height of our frame. Um, so we can get that with walk.height, which is the height, but it's also the width because every single frame in this sprite sheet is a square. And then the height will just be obviously walk.height. Okay, great. So now we have the, the image, we have where we're drawing it, and the width and the height of the image on the canvas. But now let's say from that source image, start at the top left, and crop, crop the uh, the width and the height again of this dude, so that we get the square of only one frame. Okay, perfect. So now that's the first frame, and as you can see, if we were to like do mouse X here, then I can sort of scroll through the frames because I'm changing the x value of the point within the source image where we're starting to crop. And how much are we cropping? We're cropping walk.height, walk.height. So if I were to change this to like 100, then we get like more of the source image. Okay, so let's not do that. We'll do this. And then we want this to happen automatically. We don't want to like scroll and we want to um, have it, you know, not scroll, but cut from frame to frame. So let's make a counter. So we'll say let frame equals zero, a frame counter. And then down here we'll say frame, frame plus equals one. And then, so we're gonna wanna go from like, um, Walk dot height is is one frame. So that's the width of one frame. So like right now we're looking at the second frame. If I were to do times two, there's the third frame. Times zero is the first frame. Times five is the last frame. Okay, so we're gonna be multiplying this by frame. We'll say frame plus equals one. Okay, and there he did, he walked. You see it, it's really fast. So we wanna make sure that when we get to the end of this, 
we go back to the beginning. So we'll say frame, if frame is greater than five, frame equals zero. There he goes. And he's absolutely cruising. So let's make this plus equals 0 0.1. But now we get a scrolling effect. And that's because instead of going from one to two to three exactly, we're going from one, 1 1.1, 1.2. Like, so we're scrolling along. So to fix that, we can multiply by the floor of frame. And floor rounds down automatically. So anything between one and two gets rounded down to one. So now let's see what that looks like. Boom, and there we go. So he's walking. OK, and then the next step would be to um, sort of encapsulate this information into a function or a class that we could then use for any sprite. Because as you can see in here, like I've got different animations for the death, idle, walk, jump. Jump's only one frame. Attack is two frames. Death is four frames. So we want to make something that will do this for us. So let's say, say function sprite. Uh, sprite, and we're going to want to give it the the sheet, the sprite sheet, and we'll give it an x and a y, and we'll say this dot sheet equals sheet, this dot x equals x, this dot y equals y, and now let's give it a method. We'll say this dot draw equals function, and we'll draw an image. So we'll do something like this. And the image is going to be our this dot sheet drawn at this dot x, this dot y. And instead of walk, it'll be this dot sheet, this dot sheet dot height. And we can say this dot h is sheet dot height. So instead of all of this, we can just say this dot h. This dot sheet dot height is just this dot h. Cool. And then we need a frame. So we can say this dot frame, start off at zero. And we can get the total number of frames by taking the width of the sprite sheet divided by the height of the sprite sheet. So we'll do that. We'll say sheet dot width divided by sheet dot height. So that's the total number of frames. And that's going to help us because when we get to the end, we need to go back to zero. All right, so where are we at? We have the image. Where we're going to draw it, width and height. This is going to be this dot frame, zero. This dot sheet. Oh, this dot h. OK, all right. Now, down here, we're going to say this dot frame plus equals 0 0.1. If this dot frame is greater than this dot frames, this dot frame equals 0. All right, and now let's try this out. Get rid of all this. So we'll call, so in setup, we're going to say man walk equals new 
sprite and we'll give it the image walk and we'll just start off at zero zero and then we'll in draw we'll call man walk dot draw and there it goes sweet so next we could do let's load in some more of these and check them out let's do man idle man attack man hurt and we'll load these up so we'll say idle equals load image man idle dot png and then attack equals load image man attack dot png and let's replace this with idle and see what that looks like there he is idling menacingly attack yeah yeah all right cool so that's uh i guess i'll leave it there well maybe we, we do one more thing we could say like let's say we wanted to give it a a scale and then in here we could say times this dot scale oh I gave that to the wrong thing that was the location and it was zero zero so it had no effect I wanted the width and the height of our final image that we're drawing nice so now he's a little bit bigger and we can make this a property that oh don't use that word because it's a keyword in p5 so we could give it an s or an scl and then down here when we instantiate this we could say two or three So that's pretty cool and then yeah you could do something like man.walk.x dot x equals mouse x or something and you can move around uh you probably want to use like arrow keys or something but yeah that's a quick intro to sprites in p5.js and i hope that was helpful if it was leave a like on the video and subscribe and tell me i'm super cool in the comments and thanks for watching